I had a crazy few uh, recent days or like a week because um, here's the whole story of what happened in the past week. Uh, last Saturday or Sunday-ish, uh, my wife and I were like, hey, let's go eat some hot pot after we walk the dog. And then so I was walking the dog and then um, my neighbor uh, walked came across and said hey um you know there's a dog over there and uh, it doesn't have a collar or a leash or anything uh, you should check it out i'm like oh okay and then i kept on walking and then another neighbor was like hey there's a, a stray dog over there with no leash but the dog is really nice so i was like hmm, okay but i have two dogs they're very rowdy um so i didn't want to get too close to the like stray dog so i called my wife and i was like hey uh apparently there's like a stray dog you want to check it out because uh my wife's one of my wife's lifelong dreams is to pick up a stray dog and so she was like oh cool and then um came out and then uh yeah it was a little dog with a bit bigger than our dogs but still a relatively small dog with a limp on his, his uh, hind legs so uh thankfully that what made it a little bit easier for us to catch him but then okay so after catching him um we basically took care of him for a few days and then you know um as i talked as i talked in the stream a few days ago I, we were more or less ready to kind of accept this as our third dog right but nevertheless uh we have to keep finding um the f original family of the dog right especially because number one uh it was a dog kind of dog that doesn't shed but the coat wasn't that long which means um it's been groomed recently and uh the behavior is uh, really gentle and um, you know the dog is uh, house trained and everything so you know if it's like a dog that other people might have like thrown away then um, you know maybe it's a naughty dog maybe the dog like bites or has like a really loud barking habit or whatever right uh, but when none of those were evident in this dog so we were like hmm I, so that was our primary uh, suspicion and wanting to get the dog uh, back to its family so with that uh two minute intro said i want to give you a little bit of uh ex post-mortem on the found dog experience so that if you ever come across a found dog you know what to do um uh, number one i think you there the more apps you have the better your chances are and uh, the most popular app is uh next door and um you know there's like facebook groups for things but okay so next door is supposed to be the hub but here's the big problem that um now that in hindsight that we saw next door uh really limits your search to kind of um your nearby neighborhood right but that neighbor nearby neighborhood might not be where the dog came from so my dog uh the you know the dog i took care of was actually from a few cities away and uh, unless I specifically searched for the family's name, uh, which I got to know through like extensive amounts of Googling, um, there was no way for me to find what they posted on Nextdoor. Because when I looked at Nextdoor for, you know, lost dogs, I didn't see any postings. And with, that's why I made the posting. But later on, when I searched it, it was just in a different neighborhood setting. So um, I think that is one of the things that you have to look out for if you're going to use Nextdoor. Uh, secondly, the Facebook group, uh, I think, was a very good resource because there's a lot of wonderful people who are very passionate about reuniting dogs to their families uh, or, you know, lost pets in general. But um, the what I didn't find is um, I live in the San Fernando Valley area, right? So I went to the San Fernando Valley area, uh, you know, lost pets group. But then the family of the dog wrote a Facebook post on the east uh san fernando valley facebook group and so basically again we both posted but there was no way to know where the family was uh, so if you are going to venture into the facebook uh groups territory i encourage you to like really look at every um group that's in the prox nearby neighborhood because you just never know and um Thirdly, what made it difficult was this dog didn't have a leash or a collar or a microchip. So we went to the vet, but basically there was no success in uh, tracing the dog back to its owner. So um, if you have a dog that you like to put outside, which is precisely what happened with this dog, 
you please have uh, consider getting the dog chipped or at least have a collar with the name tag on it so uh you know my wife is always wary of these people who you know steal dogs and then you know take those things away but um you know i think it's in the case that your dog runs away and um doesn't happen to run into like a dog thief or like a you know um somebody who would rip the collar off a dog it'll probably make it easier and helpful to find the dog after it's lost and uh fourth the after i tried to unsuccessfully um you know contact the owner uh, a few days later i got finally the call and then we were able to reunite him and uh i asked like you know i messaged you everywhere but um it's for some reason i don't think those got through and then they said oh it's because the search effort was basically spread out amongst many people because it was a big family and each family member had a different uh work schedule right so that makes it really difficult for all my efforts to kind of get coordinated so I sent a face. Uh, I sent a message on you know Paul Boost. I sent it on like Petco Love. I sent it on Nextdoor. I sent it on Facebook. I sent it. I sent an email to the Paul Boost. So I tried all of those things, but then uh, I wasn't getting a reply back. So I just kind of like bombarded the inbox of everything uh, instead of just sending one and hoping it comes through. So uh, that's what ultimately made it work. So I think if you are uh, if you lost a pet and you want to find it, you, it's really important to check your. Um, emails and texts frequently and moreover what made it also frustrating is um we found the dog like it was the, exactly the listing but there was no phone number and the email was not being answered right so yes i understand that um you know it's tempting to not put phone, phone numbers on these websites because it's public and you know like you might get spam callers or whatever but if we're trying to find the dog and you don't have the phone number it was very very um yeah it just makes things difficult for people to find your dog okay and um, those are some of the real things that i learned um with the experience of having this dog and uh the after we reunited the family uh the family uh gave us 130 dollars and um it cost about 30 dollars to you know take care of the dog for a few days so um we kind of broke i mean we just kind of compensated there but the rest of the hundred dollars i understood um Wow, like uh, shelters and uh, you know, lot pet pet lost and founds are no joke. It's a uh, it's very difficult and sensitive to run. So um, I donated the hundred dollars along with uh, my contribution and um, from you know my monthly recurring donations to animal um, causes. And uh, two people bought my book this month, so t additional two dollars, so uh, hundred twenty two dollars uh, donated to the Los Angeles Animal Services. So. Um, I hope this video helps you in your time of need and uh, hopefully your dog just doesn't get lost ever and uh, hopefully you won't have to find new uh, dogs on the street because hey they never get lost in the first place but if, if they do I hope this video helps. Alright that was my story. Bye.